Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a procedural rock in Cinema 4D. So first of all, we want to grab a sphere and then grab a displacer. Put the displacer inside the sphere. Select the sphere and change the radius to 25 and the segments to 200. Zoom in. Select the displacer and under the object tab we want to change the height to 7 and under the shading tab we want to grab a layer. Open that up and then let's grab a noise and then open that up and let's change the noise type to Voronoi 1 and change the global scale to 250. Awesome, so we already have a pretty basic looking rock shape here except we have a problem with these indentations in the middle of these faces. So let's exit out of that and we want to duplicate this noise so right click and go copy shader and then go paste shader change the blending mode to screen and the opacity to 50 and then open up that noise and we want to invert the colors so go black to white and white to black cool exit out of that to increase the effect let's go to the effect menu and go brightness contrast gamma and increase the contrast to 75 Cool, so if you toggle that, it's definitely fixed that indentation problem. And then before we do anything else, I just want to link the seed values on both these noises. So let's go to the first one, and right click the seed value and go set driver. And then go to the other one and go set driven absolute. That way the seed values will match depending on which seed value you change this first noise to. So if I change that to anything, you see that they match nicely. Cool. So now let's grab a null, put the expression in the sphere inside that and rename the null to rock. So I'm just gonna quickly rotate it and translate it so that it sits nicely on the grid. So for most of the detail on this rock, I'm actually going to be achieving that in the displacement map. So for now, this is all we're going to do for the rock model. And that means we need to set up the scene for rendering. So first, let's grab a subdivision surface and then a plane. Put the plane inside the subdivision surface and increase the width to 800 on each axis. And move it back on the X axis by 150. Then we want to grab a bend deformer, put that inside the plane, and then we just want to change the X translate to minus 50 for that. And under the object menu here, we want to decrease the size to 50 and increase the strength to 45. And that's not working because we need to go back to the coordinates tab and change the rotation to minus 90. Cool, so that's like our little studio that we'll be using to render. Now we want to set up a camera, so create a camera, and then we just want to translate it on the x-axis by 141, on the y-axis by 37 and then 0, and rotations 90 minus 4. So let's look through that camera. Perfect. And then right click on the camera, go Cinema 4D tags and go Protection tag so we can't move our camera. And then rename that subdivision surface to Backdrop. So now we want to set the render settings. So open them up, change the renderer to physical, change the resolution to 1920 by 1080. I'm going to turn off save for now. Change the anti-aliasing to Mitchell or Michelle, not sure how you say that. Go to the physical options here and change the sampler to progressive so we get the quickest results as possible. And go to the fix and add global illumination. And change the primary method to QMC and the secondary method to QMC. Cool. So the lighting setup for this is quite simple. And first we want to grab a PBR light. And under the details tab, we want to change the outer radius to 100 and change the area shape to disk. 
and then under the coordinates tab let's move it up by 250 and then we need to rotate it by minus 90 and then under the general tab we want to change the intensity down to 50. So if you exit out of our camera here we should just have a nice soft top light. Cool, then we want to grab a sky object and then we want to create a new PBR material and put that on our sky object. And I'm just going to change our PBR material name to sky. Open that up and I'll disable the reflectance channel and then enable luminance. And then I'm going to grab a texture. So I'll be linking this in the description so you can use the same um, HDR image. And I'm going to be using this Limbobo one here. So open that up. Cool. Just select the sky object and I'll rotate it by 10 degrees. Cool. So now let's set up a material for our backdrop. So let's create a new PBR material. Rename that to back drop, open that up, and under the default diffuse layer on our reflectance channel, let's grab a layer, then open that up, and then grab a color, and then open that, and I already set up a color palette beforehand, so I'm just going to select this color on the right here, so this is the color we'll use for our backdrop. And then we want to grab a noise, open that up, and then I'm going to grab a turbulence. And I think I'll increase the global scale to 750, and then change the high clip down to 75. Cool. And I'll exit out of that. And then I'll change the mode to multiply and the opacity to 25. Cool, and then under the default reflection layer here, I'm just gonna increase the roughness to 50 and the specular strength down to 25. Cool, now remember to put that on your backdrop and it's coming together now. So I'll look through this camera and now we can start working on the detail for this rock. So, First, we want to grab a PBR material and put that on our rock. Open that up and rename it to rock. And under our reflectance channel, under the default diffuse layer, let's change the color to be 50% gray. Cool, and now let's enable our displacement channel. And then under the textures here, let's add a layer. And then let's decrease the height to 1.5 centimeters. And then let's add sub polygon displacement. So add some subdivisions at render time. And then open the layer up. And now let's grab our first noise. And so here we're just going to layer up a whole bunch of noises that's going to add all the detail onto the surface of our rock. Cool. So let's open up that first noise. And then the first noise you want to select is a blistered turbulence. And then let's just change this white color hair also to a 50% gray. Cool. Now let's exit out of that. And then next we want to grab a Luca. So grab a noise, open that up, change the noise type to Luca. And then we just want to invert the colors, so black to white, white to black. And then let's increase the octaves to 10. And then on our contrast down here, let's increase that to 45. Cool, so that looks pretty good. Now let's exit out of that. And then change the blending mode to multiply and then just turn that down to a 20. Now let's grab a, another noise. Also change that to multiply and 20. And then let's open up that noise and we want to change the noise type to Voronoi 3. So we're going to add some like cracks to the surface with this noise and let's change the uh, global scale to 150 
and then let's um, just stretch this noise up on the y-axis by 400 percent so that it's not just uniform cracks it's all just stretched out and deformed a bit and then we want to change our high clip to one so that way we get like a really thin black line for a texture here cool now exit out of that next we want to grab another noise so grab a noise open that up and change the noise type to stuple I'm not sure if that's how you say it but anyway change the octaves to 10 and then change the global scale to 75 and then change the low clip to 10 and the high clip to 50 and then change the contrast to 75 cool so that looks pretty good and exit out of that and then we just want to change the blending mode to multiply again and then let's just turn the opacity down to 50 and then grab another noise and change the um, blending mode to multiply and then change the opacity to 30. Open that up and we want to change the noise to poxo change the octaves up to 6 change the global scale down to 45 percent and stretch it up on the y-axis by 300 and then what we want to do is just change the high clip down to 8 percent cool so now we have a whole bunch of noises that are all layered up um, and that's just going to add a whole bunch of really nice detail to the surface of our rock so remember to save at this point and if everything works let's give this a test render and see how it looks but first before we do that actually let's go to the sphere and just increase the segments to 500 and the reason we're doing that is it just means we get a nicer edge here to work with cool so press render and hope for the best cool so i just left it rendering for a little bit and i already quite like what i'm seeing however i just want to go back in and tweak um this displacement a tiny bit so i'm just going to go back in here and go back to this bottom noise and i just want to increase this up to 60 percent and that's just going to increase the effect of this noise onto our rock cool also we just want to select our sphere and turn off render perfect because that can sometimes just mess with our rendering a little bit so now i just want to start working on our reflectance channel so let's open up our rock material and let's go to our displacement channel here and just click on this little arrow and go copy shader and then go to our reflectance channel and under the default reflection layer here expand the layer for now and increase the IOR to 1.5 and then under the roughness here let's increase that to 100% and then expand that and then go and paste shader and then open that up so now we just want to go through all these noises and invert the colors so let's open up the first one and go from black to white and this one we want to put that all the way back down to black and exit that and then just go through every single one of these and quickly change them to the inverted color i'll just fast forward in the video until i've done them cool so now that all the noises have been inverted we want to grab a brightness contrast gamma effect and then just increase the brightness to 50 percent cool so now that's our reflectance channel done and let's give it another test render cool so after letting it render for a little bit this is the result and you can really see if you compare it to the old one that the reflectance really adds an element of realism so now what we want to do is start adding some color into our rock so open up the material again and then go to the displacement layer here and then go copy shader and then go back into the reflectance and then under the default diffuse layer here this is where we'll start adding some color so then let's just go paste shader and then open that up and now 
we're not actually going to be using this first noise so let's just delete that one and then let's increase the opacity of this one to 100% and then change it back to normal and then um, let's open that up and then let's go back to our rock palette here that we looked at earlier and then let's select this second gray color as our color one and then this kind of bluey color as our color two and then let's X out of that and then with our second noise we're pretty much going to keep it as normal let's just change the opacity to 25 and then this one will keep that exactly the same but this top one let's change it from multiply to screen and increase the opacity to 75 and then open that up and then what we want to do is change this black color to this third gray here and then let's change this white all the way back down to black cool so now if you have a look at the thumbnail we're starting to see more of like a realistic rock color and so that means what we can do now is give that a test render awesome I'm pretty happy with how that's looking if you compare it to the last one to the newest one I'm pretty happy with those colors um, now I just want to add one last final touch so I'm just going to open up my layers here again and go to the shader button effects and add ambient occlusion now I'm just going to put that above our bottom noise and I'll just change the blending mode to screen there you go and turn the opacity down to 15 then open up the ambient occlusion and then what we want to do is just invert direction and self shadowing only and then let's just invert these colors put the black all the way up to the right and then double click on the white here I'm just going to change that to 75 cool and then under maximum ray length let's just turn that down to 0 0.25 and then give that a test render awesome so the ambient occlusion really adds a nice little effect if you compare it to the previous render and the latest one you can really see how it adds some definition to like the edges and the cracks and it really adds a nice effect and that concludes the end of this tutorial i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you've learned something new if you have any questions feel free to drop a comment down below if you could remember to like and subscribe i'd really really appreciate it and i'll see you in the next tutorial bye